Hello and welcome to another out of spec reviews video. Crazy Sunny here. Welcome to the Tesla Model S Plaid. Welcome to a version three supercharger. You guys can already guess what's about to happen. We are gonna log the charging curve of the Tesla Model S Plaid. I'll run you through our testing procedures as always, and then we'll take a look and see how this thing charges. <laughs> This is a brand new Tesla Model S Plaid, and it's actually the same Model S Plaid that we reviewed in a prior video. It's owned by my friend Brandon, who has a really cool channel called Tesla Flex. It's on multiple different outlets and things like this, but it's actually wrapped in this purple color changing wrap, which is really neat. Um, really cool car, really cool color, of course, but it's not factory. This is an aftermarket wrap on the particular car. But of course, we're going to see how well this thing charges from zero to 100%. So here are the testing procedures. We've already DC fast charged this car earlier today. Make sure it was up to full temperature. We did see 250 kilowatts. We then drove it fairly gently down to about 3% state of charge. We now have it maxing out the heater, pulling it down to 0% where we will plug it in to this version three supercharger behind us. Once it's plugged in, of course, we're gonna wrap the charging handle in a cold, wet rag. This will help uh, reduce some thermal load on the entire system and hopefully will stop the supercharger from limiting max power. The version three handles are of course water cooled or liquid cooled, which should help as well. And then we're gonna plug it in, charge it, see how well it does. Just as a refresher, in case you didn't know, the Model S Plaid is one of the quickest cars in history. It might actually be the quickest production car ever, very close to the Rimats Nevera, which is just slightly faster, but I don't think it's in production yet. Um, either way, insanely fast car. This one costs around $150,000, and I think Brandon might even be listing it for sale for something newer, so keep an eye out if you're willing to spend had 220,000, right, Brandon? Something like that, you'll let it go? <laughs> but definitely reach out to me if you're uh, genuinely interested in getting a Plaid before the delivery timing, I'll put you in touch and this this would be a great car. It's only got three or 4,000 miles of very gentle driving, never been launched allegedly anyway <laughs> what we're gonna do of course is take take a look at this pack It's about a hundred kilowatt hours we don't know the exact specifications because Tesla doesn't give them um, but we're gonna look to see how much energy we add how long it takes and then of course see the charging speeds and guys just a quick break from the charging test you know we love our Martian wheels I've had a couple sets on my model 3 now you know they're great super lightweight strong wheels but my friend drew who runs Martian just came out with a new design get ready for this for the Model S and these wheels would look insane. And yes, they've already been test fitted on the Model S Plaid, super lightweight, really strong wheels. These tires have been used properly for sure. But definitely if you have a Model S Plaid, don't roll on the stock wheels, get a nice set of upgrades from Martian. Not paid, I just love these wheels truly. They A lot of work goes into them and uh, really the best option for your Tesla, martianwheels.com. We have now run the car down to 1% state of charge. We're just waiting for it to kick down to zero. So you're looking here on the dash, it says sentry mode unavailable, car's off, but heater's on full. We are now down to 0% state of charge. Brandon's gonna plug us in. We got the cameras rolling on the inside and I did find a wet rag. <laughs> Always gotta tap the taillight. There we go and I'm gonna wrap the handle in this rag and if anything, it's gonna help fool the sensor into thinking the handle's cold. Really don't care about the handle. Just wanna get the max charging speed that the battery will take. So I don't know if it's gonna hurt this or not, but the fans are going crazy here on the version three post, we chose the one closest to the cabinets just so there's no voltage sag on the run and we're already charging. So let's take a look at, look at the log already up to 145 kilowatts. And now it's time to log the charging curve. Man, I feel like we've done this three times this week, but you have to understand it's so important to log the curve of these cars. Uh, one, to know from user experience to know when to charge, for how long to charge, when to go to the next one. And also just to keep manufacturers honest, sometimes uh, they'll claim a really high peak speed, but then not hold it for very long. Or sometimes we see cars that overperform over peak speeds uh, claimed by the automakers. So it's very important that we do this test. To me, it's one of the most important factors of any electric car and any electric car purchasing decision. You guys get the drill. I understand we can nerd out, nerd out about charging curves all day long. Here's the deal, Model S Plaid, new battery pack, 
a little bit smaller than the Model S long range all wheel drive, the dual motor version, different pack, still 18650s, but arranged differently. Sort of a modular design between Model 3 and uh, Model Y compared to older S and X. I like the new pack design. I think it's really quite smart, uh, but it's a smaller capacity than the dual motor cars, and I think that's why the plaids weigh a little bit less. Anyway, let's get into it. Plugging in at 0% state of charge, warm pack, everything's ready to rock and roll, perfect conditions. By the way, I put that rag around the supercharger. No, it's not gonna actually damage anything. Uh, in theory, it should keep the cables cooler and uh, better for high power charging, and maybe it fools the sensor a little bit into thinking that things are cold, so it keeps giving max power. But on a cold day like this, I don't think it actually makes that much difference. It's there just to make sure that the battery pack is getting everything it's asking for and the charger is not uh, limiting. We also made sure no other cars plugged in at all on this entire uh, charging cabinet, the one megawatt supercharger version three cabinet. It was all devoted to this car. So it probably wouldn't have made a difference, but you know, just trying to eliminate variables here. Um, you'll notice the first few seconds of this clip are sort of cut off at the bottom. Uh, and that's just because we couldn't get the screen on the charging screen, but you saw in the previous clip, as soon as we plugged in, it went to 150 kilowatts and you're not gonna miss anything we pick up here as well. So anyway, plugging in at 0% state of charge, here we go, 1%, we're at 150 kilowatts, 2%, again, 150 kilowatts. Interesting that it's taken a few percent for it to ramp up. I've seen this new logic in Teslas for a while, but look, 6% now we're turning up the dials opening the taps, if you will, 250 kilowatts, just pegged right up there, 900 miles per hour of charge. This is such a silly calculation because it's only specific for that car's trim level, 16%. Fans are just kicking in on the outside. Oh, we're over six minutes in now. We've already added 20 kilowatt hours in six and a half minutes. Crazy, 250 kilowatt charging is just insane. And we've just been pegged, 6% all the way here to 30% nearly pegged wide open at 250 kilowatts. You really wanna maximize this time on a road trip, we'll talk about strategy. But 33% rolls down, now it starts closing the taps a bit, pulling down the current. And first of all, it's impressive that a 400 volt system architecture can take that much power in the first place. It's doubly impressive that the supercharger cables are this thin, thinner than version twos, water cooling, but then you get to like Electrify America CCS and they're like that big around and they're 800 volt systems. You would think they could have even half the size cables. I don't know, impressive tech. 50% comes in 15 minutes. That's where you're gonna wanna road trip. That's your road tripping charge. Even on 150 kilowatts, it tapers off at 50%. So on a road trip, charge it to half, head to the next one. That's my recommendation. Um, and maybe even just a little bit less than half if the next station's a version three. Here we are rolling up close to 60% state of charge. We're under 120 kilowatts. I would have been long gone by now. Definitely wanna get out of here, out of this supercharger by now. 60 kilowatt hours comes in about 21 minutes. That's impressive, really nothing to complain about, but it kind of gets soft up here. Like again, we're at 100 kilowatts at 67%. It's not terrible but it's not class leading. It's not blowing anyone away here. 70% doing 94 kilowatts. Well, okay, yeah, again, 25 minute charge would be good. I'm interested to see where our 30 minute charge gets us. A lot of people wanna know how, you know, how many kilowatt hours can I add in 30 minutes? What percent can I get to plugging in dead in 30 minutes? And well, let's take a look here. So we're rolling up 28. I don't think we're gonna make it to 80% in 30 minutes. Let's see. 29 minutes, yes, 75 kilowatts, 74. Again, urban superchargers, you wanna leave at around 80% state of charge, that's when it tapers. Here we are, 30 minutes gets us to 78%. 80% state of charge comes in 31, almost 32 minutes. So not bad, but charge it to 80 and leave. Do not stay there past 80% because now we're already down into the 60 kilowatt range. And yeah, just tapering. Naturally, every every charging curve is gonna have to taper. And because uh, Tesla really wants the most amount of range on their cars, they let you use the most amount of battery pack uh, capacity than most other automakers. And so when it gets up top, it really has to taper because that's truly the top of the pack. E-tron, for example, has a great charging curve, 150 kilowatts, all the way to way past 80%. And then even at like 95%, it's doing like 100 kilowatts, you know, somewhere around there. And that's just because it's got a huge, huge, huge buffer. Two different strategies. 
I don't know which is better. You tell me, I kind of like the ability to use all of the pack and then let me set the max charge rate lower. 90% state of charge in about 42 minutes right there. Cars predicting 14 minutes remaining. Every Tesla I've pretty much ever tested completes the charging cycle in about an hour, this test. So this is kind of interesting. They all do it in different ways, but Tesla pretty much tunes their cars to go zero to full in about an hour. Um, up top here, I gotta say, it's not charging poorly. 93%, 34 kilowatts, that's strong. That's pretty strong. So it really seems like the mid range of this pack, this, I would say 35 to 80% range really needs to be fattened up a little bit. And I can say this about the other Teslas that we've recently tested in this test. Model 3 is a big example. It used to be, have a great mid range and now it's kind of just a little lackluster. So not sure what's going on here. Um, but I feel like if this was like a turbocharged engine, I'd want to boost up the turbos in the mid range, get some more torque. I don't know how to describe it here in real terms, but Essentially, this is a car on a road trip. You're charging to 50% or less and heading to the next supercharger. That's just the fastest way to road trip this thing and uh, certainly does charge well. Uh, and, and this handshake times on version three superchargers, you plug this thing in, it connects, it rips and goes instantly and pretty much works every time. The reliability is amazing. I love supercharging. Uh, for some of you who don't know, I've road tripped hundreds of thousands of miles in Teslas and really only had a handful of issues. And it's just an amazing experience. It's so much fun uh, and you meet cool people. Although I feel like the, the love is dying at superchargers. You used to talk to everyone. Now people kind of hang out in their cars and play their video games, teach their own. Hour later, we're at 99% state of charge. Again, up top, you're gonna see the car go 99, 98, 100, 99. It's just the BMS getting infused. This is the first time this particular car had ever been full charged and it's been supercharged around 10 times or less. So really fresh battery pack. Uh, and it can actually sit up here at 100% for, I don't know how long, but a long time. Essentially, it just has to top balance here in the battery pack. It needs to figure out, you know, sort of where its stations are, uh, stations, where its pack voltages are, how well it's calibrated. And uh, yeah, so I would say use the, about the one hour mark here. That's a pretty good mark. That's the basis metric for me. Again, you're never really going zero to a hundred in the real world. You're gonna be going hopefully five to 50% in this car over and over and over and over and over again on a road trip. There you have it. It could sit up here for an hour trying to top balance, but you know, we've got about 96 kilowatt hours in here. I think we end with 97 kilowatt hours. Maybe we could have had another if we drove it past zero. So about 98 kilowatt hours, the car thinks we've added to the battery pack. I don't know if that number includes the extra draw by the cooling fans, but I think it does because I want to say two years ago, Tesla changed their charging strategy, like in terms of monetary value from not charging power added to the battery pack, but charging power coming from the supercharger handle. And I think that's what that number is representing uh, right there is charging power from the supercharger handle. So in theory, maybe it only added about 95 kilowatt hours to the battery pack 94. So I need to do a capacity test on this car. We can kind of pair that with our range test as well. 100 to dead. This is not an accurate capacity test. This is just an indication. Um, but definitely comment if you'd like uh, me to do a capacity and a range test on this car. I think Brandon's up for it. Huge thanks to Brandon, by the way. Tesla Flex, te check him out on TikTok. Millions of subscribers and followers. He's, it's so great to have him here in town. He loves to collaborate. Great dude, genuinely nice guy. And he's just like, yeah, let's make some videos with the plaid. That's why I bought it. So awesome. Anyway, thanks so much for tuning in to another Out of Spec Reviews video. Hope you enjoyed this charging curve. You guys let me know what you think. Do you think Tesla is taking the right approach, hitting the big numbers for advertised fast charging speeds, not necessarily having an amazing curve, or is Porsche taking the right approach with an Audi e-tron GT with 270 kilowatt charging, the peak right now on sale, Lucid's not on the market at the time of this recording, and holding it all the way from zero to 50%. I mean, that's an insane charging curve. Um, do you think that's going to affect longevity? Do you think this is safer for long term? I, I don't have an answer because we don't have enough data for cars on the roads at this point. But I will say Tesla's battery packs hold up well. I've owned a whole bunch of them. Can't complain. I've seen high mileage Taycons too, 50, 60, 70,000 miles. It's high mileage now for a Taycon. And they seem to be holding up really well. It's hard to say, but I got to say, Plaid, 
road trip this thing 50% down to five. See you on the next video. Thanks so much for watching. We have a Patreon link is in the description. We'd really love your support. We post to it quite often. We'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.